Ladies, gentlemen, Twigger, Scara, Annie, High Yellow Commentary. Do I need to say any more? I'm here with another High Yellow Commentary featuring Scara playing Annie, who I we finally started seeing a little bit in the world. Um, some of the teams bringing out support Annie, but we're seeing the mid laner from Team Dignitas, the one and only Scara, playing Annie and going to show us what she can do in the mid lane against an Orianna, fairly standard mid lane opponent. Um, should be a very fun match to watch at least, and we've also got a Lucian in this game, so Turtle Dunks playing on that Lucian. Um, we also have uh, another person, Heartbeat, that's in this game, and Heartbeat, for a lot of you who um, don't know, was on Team Marn during the uh, the it would, would, would have been the spring split um, in North America. Um, he was the AD carry, and then he turned support, I believe. Can't exactly remember how everything uh, turned out with that team, but they are now out of the LCS. But nice to see him playing still, and uh, might see him in season four with the uh, promotion series and anything like that. So he should hopefully put on a pretty good show with this Thresh. But this is a ranked solo queue game that these guys are in. Lucian getting caught up by a Thresh hook, but uh, looks like the first dive going to be coming out of this top lane. The ignite down onto the Zac, and it is going to pop the passive out of Zac. So Leeson already doing a little bit of work on this Zac, um, and it's not going to really amount to anything. He is just going to come back to life and uh, continue to farm and come back with hopefully a couple more items. But Lucian getting poked against this wall here, but. Uh, the dodge of the uh, the Janna Tornado was crucial from that vein, but a barrier being popped to draw to stop that three proc from going on. But it looks like the barrier bait is coming out. First blood is going to thresh, and a great Janna Tornado to stop A and B from coming in on that one to get the double kill for the Janna. But um, first blood going to the thresh. It's mightily unfortunate, but Lucian did end up picking up a kill, and luckily the first blood gold went onto that thresh rather than the vein. That would have been the last thing you wanted. So really not a horrible trade there, but um, still not the best. Really wish that auto attack would have gone off a bit earlier for the Lucian. But Scar doing a little bit of harassment onto this Orianna, and look at the damage coming out. So putting that uh, that shield on uh, Annie's E and allowing Orianna to auto attack and do damage to herself. Pretty big deal there. Looks like Lee Sin trying to do some work onto the Zac. He is quite low. He didn't actually choose to go back and buy. He's going back now, so kind of a risky move on Zac's part, but hey, to each their own, right? 0326T. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that's... Is, is it supposed to say something? Am I just not seeing it? I have no idea what that's supposed to be, but that's going to be an annoying name to say. So I'm just going to call him Zach during this. Um, Scara doing decently in the CS. Oriana sitting at 36 to the 31 of Scara, but up in the top lane, 39 to 16 for Leeson. And Leeson's already doing a proxy against that Zach, but Scara getting caught out a little bit here is going to try to get away from this. Taking a lot of damage. The Ignite going down onto Orianna. Oh, sorry. Off of Orianna. There's the kill going for Scar, but a traded kill. Fine not even getting part of the assist on that one. So a better trade for that blue team. But uh, at least Scar did get a kill. Um, he could have just gone down by himself. Landing a... I think it was a pretty nice stun underneath that turret. But I'm excited to see actually a Lucian game of kind of like a high ELO caliber. Because I've only really seen him in my ELO, which is currently gold one. Um, it's not half bad, but like I, I want to know how these top tier players play him because obviously they must see something in him if they're going to play it in a solo queue like this. Um, or he could just suck miserably and they were just trying him out. <laughs> but who knows? Oh, the Ignite going down. Sorry, I'm taking a sip of my chocolate milk. Yes, I am having chocolate milk. But the Ignite going down onto Lucian. They're not going to be able to catch up to him, and Janna's going to have to pop her shield. The third proc is going to go off, do a little bit of damage, but nothing actually coming from that one. And Lee Sin now once again fighting this Zack. He's going to go and pick up his little bloblets. The bloblets are very cool with that skin, actually. And they're not just blobs, they're kind of like moving items. But this bot lane already doing pretty decently. Um, leading in CS just by a little bit, but constantly getting pushed back to the turret. Um, Thresh and Vayne are a very aggressive combination. If Thresh lands that hook, um, the CC lasts for a long time. The hook, the flay, and then the condemn from the Vayne if they land it. It's, it's a lot of CC and uh, a lot of damage you've got to survive. 
But once again, Zack and Lee Sin just doing what top lane bruisers do, and that's just bully the crap out of one another. Um, Zack opt to go for the double door and shield, while Lee Sin going for the double door and blade. So one being very, very aggressive, one being very, very defensive. I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to build next, but we can still see that Lee Sin has currently a commanding lead over the CS in that top lane. Zack has been pushed to his turret for the majority of the game right now. And um, no action really happening up in the mid lane with Scar. He is literally just kind of chilling there. But we do have a gank going into this bot lane. Vi coming in through the lantern. But Thresh going to miss his hook and nothing's going to come from that one. And once again, we're back up in the top lane where people are just hitting each other constantly. We do have a bit of action coming down into this bot lane though. The two junglers are here, so expect to fight. The box going down, Janna being ulted by this Vi. Heartbeat is currently very, very low. I don't know if they're going to get the kill on that one. The Condemn coming out to save Heartbeat's life, and that's probably going to be the end of the fight right there. I can't believe Heartbeat managed to survive that one. So one kill for nothing, one support for nil. Um, they were really targeting those supports rather than uh, the carries, but Zack getting engaged on by Lee Sin and having to go all the way back to his second tier turret to get away. Lee Sin with a 40 CS difference uh, once he picks one more. And I believe that Lee Sin might very well. He is taking the blue buff away from this blue team. So Scar's team doing quite well with one another. Um, good communication and currently dominating in that top lane. And um, by Lee Sin dominating in that top lane, it's making Scar's life a hell of a lot easier. Because that now means that Orianna will not have the blue buff. While Scar, well, should have that blue buff. Um, he does. He has it right now. So he has that stun available. He has Tibbers available. It's so interesting casting an Annie game because I've never actually done it before. So I have to kind of remember everything that Annie's going to be trying to do. The ultimate from Orianna Shockwave coming out, only doing about a quarter of the damage, a quarter of uh, Scar's life. But there's some damage coming down. Scar's going to have to flash away from the knockup from Aatrox. Vi is here, though. She's going to Vault Breaker over top of the wall with a flash trying to get in on that one. But the ultimate from Scar misses. Just barely off target. If that uh, Flash Fall Breaker had knocked them a little bit, it would have given him the CC that he needed to land that Tibbers, but it was not the case. He did miss that uh, that lovely Annie ultimate. And now he's probably standing there just like yelling at his teammate, like, why the f didn't you? And uh, yeah, that's probably what he's doing because Scar is known for yelling, I'm sure. <laughs> he's always, always smiling on camera, always seems just like a fun guy to be around and uh, pretty carefree about things. Um, same with the majority of Dignitas, I find I'm a cutie pie the same way, and same with Kiwi Kid, like, they just seem kind of like a, a fun team. But Zach getting dove on a little bit here, he, oh, and the kick is going to stop him from going anywhere. Great little play by Pink Unicorn, too. Now he just has to take out these Bloblets, should not really be a problem for this Lee Sin. There's the kill, so Lee Sin picking that one up in the top lane, he had been looking for that for a while, and look at how def- Oh, but here we go, a gank in the mid lane, Vault Breaker over the wall, and the ultimate going down onto Orianna. Scar is still alive, are they going to have enough to take Scar down? He is going down the passive from Aatrox being popped. If his Q is available, we'll be able to get away from this one, but it is currently not available. Now he is dead. Um... Yeah, so that was just a very nicely played counter gank. If I just happened to be in the area at the right time, it was a good gank from the blue team, but uh, just an unfortunate set of circumstances. But a great condemn coming from the vein, and a great ultimate coming out of Janna to knock her away from that one. That definitely would have been a dead Lucian. Um, he does not have his ultimate up, and a flash coming out of him. He is really cocky here. But uh, the barrier was popped by Vayne, but she does still have her, uh, her flash available. Um, the Lucian ultimate was used, so there's no ultimates left and nearly no summoner spells besides a flash from the Vayne and a flash from the Janna. So I don't think anything's going to come from this one, but uh, these lanes are becoming very, very close. The tumble away from the Tornado didn't want to get hit by that CS, sorry, that uh, CC, but Lucian is pretty much out of mana, so don't expect him to be jumping anywhere and doing much damage other than auto attacks. But uh, once again, Zack is being jumped on. <laughs> kind of a pansy little jump there to try to get away but Zach is going to need some serious help it is 113 minions to 47 in the top lane and I wouldn't be surprised to see him get dove here yep here's the dive there's the ultimate from Zach there's the kick and the jump out of turret range but Zach is going to survive for now um Lisa going to take a little bit of minion damage but life stealing a bit off from that Tiamat's and it doesn't look like Lee Sin is going to try to come back in on this one not yet at least there is the minions are now tanking this up. Expect to see. There's the Q and there's the kill. Very, very well done. Easy kill for him. 
And <laughs> I love the pool party. Kicking the tree, getting the coconut. Isn't that just like one of the best backs? And he holds the coconut. Damn right, he's going to keep that coconut and start hitting things with it. Um, I haven't really seen many of the pool party skins, so I'm, I'm re <laughs> really enjoying this. That is a great back. <laughs> Kick the tree, get your coconut. That is a great animation. Good job, Riot. Seal of approval from Twigger, which I know you care a lot about. Um, <laughs> but looking at the CS here, we of course already know about the huge advantage coming from Lee Sin. 126 to 48 in the top lane. Very close for the jungler. 65 to 63 in favor of uh, Vi. 88 to 96 in favor of Orianna. So Scara needs to pick up the pace a little bit here. And 85 to 94 in favor of Vayne. A little bit of an advantage there. Um, Scara currently be the only one kind of losing his lane for the team. Well, not losing his lane, but uh, great hook landing from Thresh. That's going to be an easy kill for Rest Institution on that vein. Uh, turtle Dunks being taken down there. Um, he's sitting at 120 while the vein is sitting at 211. Already has that uh, Bilgewater Cutlass. And once again, we have Zach getting fought by this Lee Sin. He's going to land the Q. There we go. Oh, huge, huge play from that Lee Sin. Sorry, I have just got to. We're just gonna rewind that one. I just, I just want to watch this one again, but in slow motion. We're gonna make it in slow motion. Ready for this? Ready for this? And he's gonna prepare for the jump, or is he? Boosh! Boom! That was a great play from the Lee Sin, making sure that that jump did not go through, stopping him dead in his tracks. And basically, at this point, Zach is shit out of luck. Like, there is nothing he can do. He, he's going to get towered over every single time. Like, the only way that they're going to be able to make anything happen here is that they just need to kind of forget about top lane, group up, and try to force a team fight or an objective to get Zach some gold. Because right now, he's nearly 100 CS down. And Leeson is just running rampant. And see, he's already destroying Aatrox. There's another kill. 4-0-0 for that Leeson. Doing one hell of a job on that Leeson in the top lane. So I guess Scar doesn't really need to do all that well. Because he's just going to get his ass carried. The Q already <laughs> landing onto Zach before he even got into lane. The ultimate from Zach coming out. But he's actually staying, I think, a little bit too long. There's a team that's going out. Oriana being dove on a little bit here. It looks like Zach did manage to get away. Scar going to get in here to try to kill Oriana. I cannot. Oh, there's going to be the kill. Yeah, A and B just dove a little bit too far on that one. And it looks like there's another engagement in the bot lane. Janet using her ultimate to try to heal everybody up. She is going to get taken into turret range. And there's going to be the kill onto Heartbreak. Heart, heartbeat, sorry. And Lucian now taking a couple turret shots. That's going to be a double kill for Heartbeat. And man, this uh, these lanes are just getting a little bit out of control for this red team. 4-0-0 for Lee Sin. 2-1-3 for Vayne. 3-0-2 for uh, Heartbeat's Thresh. So uh, I'm sure Vayne would kind of want to get a couple of these kills. But uh, And once again, Lee Sin doing the exact same thing. 3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-2-3-0-
Is the ultimate going to come down? Vi does have it available, but it looks like she might die here. Not really a whole lot that she could do. They're just getting CC'd up completely. But um, Zach getting a kill. Now, this could be good or bad. Um, Zach getting a kill means that he did get some money, which means that he might be able to make something out of himself. But it also now means that he is worth money again. So, it's alright with Lee Sin killing him constantly, because he's going to end up only being worth, like, 50 gold, so it's not even worth using abilities on him. But um, now he is worth gold again, so if Lee Sin can continue to just abuse him, Lee Sin's gold lead is just going to skyrocket. Looks like we have a bit of a group up in the mid lane. Scar is coming in here as well. The lantern being used just to shield everybody up. If Lee Sin lands a Q, I'm sure he's probably going to go in on that Aatrox. Just want to see a little bit of the gold here. Look at that. 8,000 for Lee Sin. 3.5k for Zach. Huge difference. And now his lead's going to just get even bigger. So Zach already being taken down very, very low. Aatrox being taken low as well. His passive is going to be popped. And is he going to be able to get out of there? He jumps over, but the Lee Sin Q was already activated when he jumped over. So just a flying kick there. And Vayne taking a little bit of damage from the Shockwave out of Orianna. Zack is very, very low. I don't believe he has his passive up. But the Janna Ultimate coming out to try to save Zack's life, which it did. But now Lee Sin is just running rampant. Just going to try to get somebody here. Lucian being ultimate by Vi. The Orianna Ball still doing some work, but not going to be enough to kill anybody. Zack jumping back in there, which is definitely a mistake. Scar picking up that one. And that's going to be the end of the team fight. So that was a four for one exchange. Man, that was just very, very good play. Um, out of this red team, um, they're just so far ahead that they can afford to do these turret dives and these kind of risky plays. And Lee Sin is getting pretty lucky with that uh, that Q landing and him activating it before Aatrox could get away. That was a very very solid Q. And uh, Lee Sin now sitting at eight zero two. This commentary should be more about this Lee Sin player than Skara because Skara hasn't really done a whole lot this game. He's playing solidly two three and two with one hundred and forty CS. But the star of this game right now is Lee Sin. Just it already got a black cleaver as well. It's so dominant right now. But Scar's Tibbers is available. Uh, he cleared out that top lane to kind of get that thing pushing. And Orianna's going to take her blue buff. Scar's probably going to come down and take his blue buff as well. And then expect to see probably a push um, in that mid lane to try to get that inhibitor down. Because they've already taken down the... First two tier turrets, all they have is that inhibitor turret, and they are so strong that they can dive these things with not much issue. It looks like Scar is actually not going to get that blue buff. It's going to go to Vi. Um, kind of an interesting choice. I don't know why you would necessarily want it on a Vi more than an Annie, but... So, Heartbeat and this Lee Sin being quite ballsy because I'm pretty sure Lee Sin could 3v1 these guys. So I'm pretty sure they don't need to worry about anything if uh, Thresh is there as well. The Condemn going on to Lucian, that's going to be a very, very easy kill. The amount of CC that comes out of those two. And Oriana being picked off here a bit. Probably going to have to use her ultimate to survive this one. Nope, Janet's Tornado is going to be enough. A little bit of damage. Harass coming out onto Lee Sin, but barely did anything to his health. He's just going to lifesteal that back up with his Iron Will. And Zack looks like he's going to jump in. There he is with the Orianna Ball. But uh, the Shockwave not going to be coming out of that one. Just a little bit too far away. Vault Breaker being charged up. The Lee Sin Q landing onto the Janna. But doesn't look like he's going to... Oh, he is going to follow through. There's the kick. And there's an easy kill. Safeguarding over to Vi and making sure that he can survive this one. The Ignite is down on Lee Sin. But uh, it's still looking like this is going to be a pretty good fight. Shutdown going for the Zack onto the Vayne. Zack is still alive, so still making his presence felt here. But it's not going to be enough. Zack's passive is going to go off. That was wholeheartedly with the Lucian being killed beforehand a five for one trade Lucian does not have his ultimate available so he can't really kill them from a long distance going to use that dash to escape that thresh hook but Lucian's ultimate is going to be available in a couple seconds wonder if he's going to try to get this lease in but there's the damage coming out from Scar locking him down heartbeat picking himself up another kill this scumbag heartbeat <laughs> just securing all the kills it's like the new Edward over here or Crepo but um, yeah I don't really know what the blue team can do to kind of escape this one we have a lease in that's 10 0 5 5 0 7 on the thresh and um you wish that those kills would go on to people like their uh their annie or their vein but you know thresh looks like he's now building towards what um it could very well be a shirelli out of that uh philo stone but he's also building into the ages of the legion and that uh, locket of the iron solari so 
it's always good if the uh, support gets some kills and builds things that are going to be beneficial for the team rather than just themselves. So um, those aura items, a very good way to spend your hard-earned gold by stealing kills. <laughs> but I think Lee Sin should probably calm down on the kill grabbing because he really does not need any more money. Let's just see where he's sitting at right now. 11k. There's no one even really close. Vayne is the only person next to him, and she's over 2,000 gold away. So Lee Sin is just in a league of his own. Um, as we can see, Scar went for that uh, Deathfire Grass, really going for that big bursty magic damage. And um, has a needlessly large rod. Don't know if he's going to turn that into a uh, Death Cap or if he's going to go for more of the Zonias. I would expect the Death Cap because I don't really see what he needs defense for with how his team is doing. Um, not like there's anybody really on the enemy team who's much of a threat. Um, there's the sun coming out of Scar. The uh, passive going to be activated and the shockwave missing everybody completely. Pink Unicorn once again picking up another kill. Vayne doing her job over on the Lucian. And there's going to be a double kill for the Vayne. There's two double kills going on. Zack is going to do a very, very pansy jump. And there's a triple kill for the Lee Sin. 13 0 6. Nothing you can do about that one. Zack lost his lane so hard. But look at Lee Sin's farm as well 253. He's over that 10 CS per minute. This guy has had a phenomenal game on Lee Sin. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. I think this is probably going to be the end unless they kind of dive the turret for any of the kills that might be coming in. But I don't think that's going to be the case. So this was all about Scar's Annie. But uh, <laughs> it looks like he just had a pretty average normal game on Annie in that mid lane. But all about that Lee Sin with his dominating performance. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that high yellow commentary. And I will see you guys next time.